Welcome back to Sports Dump, Lewis County's only sports podcast, formerly known as Let's Take About It, sponsored by Elam's Home Furnishings and Sleep Center, as well as Gobel Septic. I'm Aaron Vantile, joined tonight by Chronicle Sports Editor Eric Trent and sports writer Alec Dietz. Uh, how are you guys doing? Good. Glad Eric decided to show up this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what Do you want to tell us about Dune, Trent? Dune Spoiler is free. the best movie of the year. I don't know if you can really spoil <laughs> Dune. Like, it's a book that's been out for 50 years. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I don't know how many people actually know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, like, explain it's the plot. It's also just the first part, I guess, so it's not like some <laughs> crucial plot point will be spoiled. Yeah, they greenlit uh, Chapter 2, and it sounds like Chapter 3 is probably coming, too, so yes. in two or three years we can talk about that. Yes. Um, as, <laughs> as I'm sure we will all still be here doing this in two or three years. <laughs> Uh, our first item before we get into local stuff, we got to talk about the story out of California where Inglewood High School beat Morningside 106 to nothing. Uh, at one point, Inglewood was up 104 to nothing and went for two and got it. <laughs> so just uh, throwing this out there. How do you guys feel about Inglewood beating Morningside 106 to nothing? And how would that fly around here? I don't know. I don't think it would fly well over here. I, I think the... Uh, I remember we were talking about the, the kid that scored 16 goals a couple of weeks ago. This feels a little different just because, like, they made a concerted effort to go for two when they were up by 104 points. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't, like, I, I actually didn't read the story. Did they talk to the coach? Did he explain it all why... Uh, let's see. Attempts to reach Inglewood coach Milvon James were unsuccessful Saturday morning. Oof. Uh, the coach of the other team said, we know they were better and superior team. I think it was classless, but they're grown men and I'm not going to tell them how to run their program. Throwing the ball for four quarters with your starting quarterback just doesn't seem right. Why take the chance of him getting hurt? It sounds like he's telling grown men what to do with their program. <laughs> it does kind of sound like he's doing that. Um, yeah, it's like, come on. Like we've talked about this before. Like you get to, the, the classic thing to do is to hit the 40 and then just, like, take your foot off the gas and, you know, you know do have a smoke break or whatever you're going to do. Yeah. What was the game? There was a game the other week uh, around here where a team was up big, and I think the last – no, it was, uh, it was Central Washington football it was playing some really, really bad team. And on their last possession, two offensive possessions, they just took a knee every down. Like it's not impossible to do that, yeah. Especially at the high school level. So yeah, I like mean, if a college is a you know a D two D three college is doing that, like you know high school coaches should follow suit. Yeah, like you can just you know run dive or whatever, and sure, you, just, you can slow things down. I don't know. It seems a little excessive to me. Yeah. I agree. Um, and yeah, I think if you tried to pull that around here, like a fight would probably break out. Yeah, it depends <laughs> where it would, it, it, it would happen. But like if that happened, then I don't know. Where Randall? do you think, Go do you think on. it'd be the worst? <laughs> if it happened in, like, Randall, do you think there would be a fight in the parking lot? Um, I don't know. It depends <laughs> on who they're playing. Forks. But maybe. <laughs> yeah. Forks game. <laughs> I feel like we were pretty close to that anyway. The week um, after the Forks game up in Forks, that happened then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'd be very upset. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's, like, a certain point where if you're leading by X amount, you should just, like, chill. Yeah. Uh, 40 is acceptable. 50 is like, okay, like what, what are we doing here? And then you get up to like in the sixties and it's like, once you hit like past 40, it becomes a challenge just to score that many points without the clock running out. So you got a running clock and like, it's the the sheer logistics of it are kind of impressive. It was a dick move, but it's kind of impressive. (laughs) I don't know if they have a running clock in uh, California. They, they might not. I'm not sure. Um, so that'd be another interesting thing. But I know, I th- I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it was Nacelle, but someone put 100 points up in eight man this year. That's a lot. So um, oh, yeah, it does happen. The that. other team scored points, though. It wasn't like 102 to zero. You know, it's like 102 to 48 or something. Yeah, so. I mean, Winlock scored 80 the other day, but they gave up like almost 50. Yeah. So exactly. that's like understandable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love eight man. <laughs> <laughs> it breaks all the rules. There's no. There's no rhyme or reason to no. it. Um, let's see any COVID scheduling updates. We are past the regular season. Now we'll get into the week. I guess we're in week nine recap. Yes. Uh, momentarily, but yeah, any major schedule updates that have come in in the last few days, we're recording a little early this week. No, no, no. Everything's scheduled as of yet. I don't know how it would work if a game got canceled. Um, 
honestly, like, I feel like, say, I don't know, any school had to cancel their, you know, a game for COVID, they'd probably just be done and they'd have to forfeit. So they could yeah. postpone the winter to state game for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, week nine recap. We've got on Alaska 60, Stevenson, nothing. Marshall Haight had 231 rushing yards and five touchdowns. Not bad. Toledo 34, Rainier nothing. There's going to be a lot of games like this in this uh, list, I see. Yes. Toledo beat Rainier 34 nothing. Justin Phila and Zane Rainey each had two rushing touchdowns. Peel Valley beat North Beach 50 to 6. The first of two Peel Valley games we're going to touch on in this. Uh, seven different Titans scored touchdowns. Napavai beat Morton White Pass 46 8. Ashton Demarest and Gavin Parker combined for four touchdowns. The Tigers ran for 300 yards. Uh, Tumwater 48, Centralia 6. Carlos Matheny ran for three touchdowns for Tumwater. Caden Soboleski scored Centralia's lone touchdown. Is Caden, is that Cole's younger brother? Older brother. Older brother. He, he got held back, and so they're graduating together. Okay, cool. WF West 35, Black Hills nothing. Gavin Fugate and Cameron Amoroso each had two touchdowns. The Bearcats won their fifth straight game. Winlock 48, Republic nothing. They had fireworks at this one. It was the big yep. story. It was also homecoming. Uh, Neil Patching had five touchdowns. Nolan Swafford had four. God, disappointing day for Swafford there. I know. His, his stats are four? taking a hit. Come on, that's a big 14 drop. touchdowns the last two weeks for Swafford. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mossy Rock 70, Oakville 8. Seven Vikings scored a touchdown apiece. They clinched up district playoff berth. To 52, White Salmon 8. Gavin Watson had three touchdowns. Dakari Hickel ran for 212 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Rochester won the number three seed in a pigtail game with Shelton and Aberdeen on Monday. Did they do like the Kansas tiebreaker deal? They did. It was over in less than 30 minutes, like 20 minutes. That's nice. Yep. And let's see, Toledo played again. They beat P.O. Valley (laughs) 28-14 to advance to the district crossovers. Uh, sadly, that's the end of the line for Peel Valley, who is probably a deserving of one of the 12 state births, it seems. But uh, due to scheduling and setups and things like that, uh, it came down to those two playing for the third District 4 seed to go play Friday Harbor. Is that right? Yep. yep. Okay. And then Adna got back on the field and lost 17 nothing to Wakayakum uh, after a long COVID break. Tough place to play. It is. It, was it in Wakayakum? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is a very tough place to play. People forget that. <laughs> so any of those games stand out. None of them were even close, except for I assume the Rochester uh, pigtail situation was somewhat close. That was a really good, intense uh, game. Shelton lost to Aberdeen in the first game. And then it was Shelton against Rochester. Shelton scored on their opening drive. Rochester gets the ball. False start, five yards, first snap. Talon, they hand, they hand it off to Talon Betsy, goes for three yards. Not looking good, third mm-hmm. and 12. Then they throw a 27-yard touchdown pass to Garen Smith. Instead of tying it up, it was 6-7. to seven. They could have just tied it up, kicked a PAT. A.J. Easley went for it, gave it to Talon oh, Betts up the man. middle, and he, he punched it through. <laughs> and it, the, everyone stormed the field. It was crazy. <laughs> Good for Easley. That's the first time they've been in the playoffs since... 2012. 2012, okay. And before that, 2001. <laughs> um, 2001, really? Wow. That's what you said. Um, yeah, that would have been... 2001 was probably back when like Bob Wollen was the coach there, maybe? So he was the head. Yeah, I think he would have been there back then. Um, okay, cool. So Rochester in the playoffs. Good for them. Yep. Uh, let's see. You guys uh, run into any beautiful porta potties out on your adventures lately? Not enough. Not not enough. Not enough. <laughs> Man, there's you know there's nothing worse than having to go and not seeing a global septic sandy can yep. out there on the on the side of a football field or the golf course or you know a track meet wherever you may be. Global Septic provides septic service and portable sanitation. For Thurston County, Lewis County, Mason County, Cowles County, and Grays Harbor County, you guys already know all the wonderful things they do. Septic pumping, septic inspection, septic riser installation, commercial septic pumping. My favorite. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, baby, <laughs> grease trap services one of these days. You can have them come over and just empty that grease trap. It's going to be great. 
Of course, they'll rent you a porta potty, portable sinks, uh, anything you need for your outdoor gathering. Keep it safe, keep it clean, keep people from, you know, peeing on your azaleas or whatever you got going on. Visit GoebelSeptic.com, G O E B E L Septic.com, or give them a call, 360 736 2167. We are, of course, very happy to have Global Septic sponsoring this dumb podcast. Uh, let's get into the other sports report. What's what's going on with uh, volleyball? So everybody except for <laughs> the two A's um, are doing district tournaments now. Um, tonight is actually the first round of the one B uh, district tournament. So uh, PL is playing Wishka tonight on the road, um, and then Masuark has Oakville in the first round. Yep. Tonight, who do you, so. who do you like in Mossy Rock Oakville? I like Mossy Rock to not lose a single set like the rest <laughs> of the way probably so <laughs> uh they're pretty good so i think that mossy rock will pr- probably be playing in that that title game in winlock on the sixth i think that's saturday um pl obviously has a pretty uphill climb um playing wishka on the road uh, that's a long drive too i think it's a little ways yeah um grace harper county uh so that's those are the the 1b team still alive for for 2b the bracket's a big mess. Uh, every time I look <laughs> at it, my eyes cry. Uh, Who's, but, who is left uh, standing? So Adna is the only area team that's still in the winner's bracket. So they're going to be playing in the semifinal. They're um, on the state for the first time since 2014. Yep. Okay. They're going to be playing Raymond in the semifinal on Wednesday. And the other semifinal is between Toodle, Lake, and Kalama. Um, so if Adna can get by them, then they'll be playing in the title game on Saturday. Um, and then in the losers bracket, we've still got Napa Vine, the young Napa Vine team still alive. Uh, they're going to be playing Wakayakum, um, scrappy Wakayakum team. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's like the, uh, the tough place to play joke with Wakayakum every time someone plays them. Oh, the scrappy. like, oh, that's scrappy. the scrappiest team in the league. It's what's every the, single time. What's the best uh, playoff, um, like, stock qu- coach quote you guys have heard uh, a, a ton of times so far this year? My favorite leading up to the playoffs is always, well, oh, we control our own destiny. Oh, God. <laughs> like, so yeah, just every time <laughs> I had that, man. <laughs> I, I don't know if there were, there's a playoff one that stands out, but I remember before this year, if I had a nickel for every time a coach said return to normalcy, I'd Oh, yeah, that was, that was a big yep. one. That, that was, was a big the one. COVID one. Um, we, and when, in fact, there has been no return to normalcy. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, a little off there. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Have you heard anything cliche yet? Not off the top of my head, no. Um, yeah, so. Uh, but yeah, Napa Vine's still alive. Winlock is going to be playing Stevenson on that side of the bracket. Uh, at this point in the losers bracket, if you lose, you're out. Mm-hmm. Um, so you win two games, you're in to state. How yep. many District Four teams are going to state? Five, six, six, six in volley- two B volleyball. Six. Okay. Yep. So yeah, they just need to win twice and they're in. And then on the other side of the bracket, uh, on Alaska is going to be playing Forks, uh, and they'll play the winner of Rainier Ocosta. This the last seed Rainier is still alive. Yep. Wow. Um, they had to do a play in game with Morton White Pass in Toledo and they got by him. Um, and then they, uh, let's see, they lost to Kalama because, you know, Kalama, but then they swept past South Bend. So, wow. Um, so you could say they control their own destiny at this they point. They do. <laughs> wow. They do. You could say all these teams control their own <laughs> destiny at this point. Uh, so, yeah, as, as far as volleyball goes for, for the playoff teams, I think Adna is probably in the best position um, for a good seed. Again, they're already into state. Um, I think on Alaska has a really good chance of making it to state. Um, they have a pretty favorable matchup against Forks. Um, they only have to go across town. They're playing at Napa Vine. Um, so there should be a lot of on Alaska fans there. Yeah, Napa Vine plays in on Alaska, and on Alaska plays in Napa Vine. Oh, yeah, you got to give them a neutral court. I don't know. And then if they can make it past Forks, they have to get by a sort of not amazing Ocosta team and then the la- or the last seed Rainier. So on Alaska is in a pretty good position yep. on Wednesday to make it to state. Um, Napa Vine has a little bit of a tougher road. Uh, they have to probably get through one of the better teams uh, in the loser's bracket in Wakaikum. Um But uh, yeah, there, there could be, there could be three, maybe yeah. Three teams going to state uh, to two B level in our area. 
All right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And the uh, state volleyball tournament will be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, November. Wait, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Uh, oh, just Thursday, Friday, November yeah. 11th and 12th in yep. Yakima at the Sundome. Yep. All right, what's uh, what's going on with soccer? So we got District Two B soccer going on. Yeah, uh, District Two A soccer is going on too. Yes, and One A and One A. All is, how's Tenino? Are they still in it? Uh, Tenino is still in it. So they've had sort of a disappointing year, probably by you know their expectations. Um, they lost four league games just to two teams: Montesano, who is very good, um, and Elma twice, which was pretty surprising. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they are the third seed. Um, and they're going to be playing Kingsway Christian, who I think they've already beaten this year 4-1 to one yep. in the first round. Uh, if they can get by that tonight, uh, they'll play Montesano in the second round. If they can get by them, they're in the state. If they lose, they play in the third-place game, and the winner of that third-place game gets to go to state. So um, it's very doable. Uh, it's, I, I, I think if I had to guess, I would say they probably get through Kingsway tonight, probably lose to a, a really good Montesano team. And then they might end up playing Elma in the third place game. Ooh. Yeah. So that'd be interesting to see if they could tough pay to beat back the same team three state. times. It is. Yep. It is. So <laughs> anyway, that's the that's the one A soccer rundown. What's uh where where are the two B's at in uh in the soccer world? Two B's are in the semifinals. All four teams have made it to state, which is Adna, Onalaska, Toledo, and Kalama. They all all those teams won last night in the district opener. Um Adna is going to be pay- facing on Alaska in one side of the semifinals and then Toledo and Kalama in the other one. Okay. But, but all four of them are going. Pretty low pressure. Yeah, they're already all going to state. So at this point, it's just for just for seeding purposes yep. yeah. and bragging rights and all that. But um, not as much pressure as probably Tonino is facing. Yeah. Uh, and then two is WF West. I saw they lost to Ridgefield. Yes. Six nothing. Okay. Uh, the GSHL is really good. They're loaded this year. Um, WF West is now facing Washu. They're hosting Washougal tonight in a loser out game, and it's going to be a tough road. Washougal is the fi- actually the fifth seed from the GSHL. They beat Shelton, I think, in the play-in game to see who would get the final spot in the district playoffs. Okay. And they would have to beat Washougal tonight and then beat the loser of Tumwater Hawkinson to get into state, which yeah. will be Hawkinson beat Black Hills 10 to 0. Oh. Yeah. And did, but not, West they, Black Hills did any player score 16 goals? <laughs> no. Mm. Mm. Not good. Not enough, impressed. I guess. So, yeah. We, we have found out this week that the GSHL is absolutely loaded yeah. in soccer. <laughs> Four of their teams are like top 10 in the state. All right. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tough sledding for uh, WF West. Yep. Uh, we've also got state cross country coming up on Saturday in Pasco at Sun yeah. Willows Golf Course. Any kids from around here you're looking at uh, expecting to have a pretty good showing or compete for you know a medal or something along those lines? Yeah, Selena Nimi from Rainier was fourth at districts. It's a really good district, though. Um, what the coaches were saying. This is a very tough district, so getting fourth here is will set you up pretty good for state. Rainier girls are going as a team, and Morton White Pass boys place third to get the final s- state spot um, as a team. Okay. And at the the two A level, uh, or at least from our coverage area, we had uh, thirteen runners uh, advance. Um, a bunch of them go to Tumwater. Their the boys' best runner is is John Hoffer. He finished third. Um, but Rochester's Levi Jennings uh, was sixth. I think he was like 20 seconds behind him. Um, so, And then uh, Centralia, uh, Devin Harrison finished 17th to advance to state two. So yep. a nice. bunch of individual qualifiers uh, okay. heading off to the Tri-Cities. Yep. Oh, the beautiful Tri-Cities. Yes. Um, let's. It's time for the perfect report. Ooh. Who is still perfect after nine weeks in the playoffs <laughs> coming up? Who is it? Only one team left. Only one. Only one. Still only one. It has been for four weeks now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Napavine. Do we think Napavine can run the table? How many games will they have to win? So they'll have to go win a crossover game. Four. Crossover, and then it's a 12-team tournament. So, so they get a bye. They get a bye, and then... They're in the quarterfinals, yeah. semifinals, final. Okay, four, so yeah. four games. Can they do it? I think they will. Interesting. What a what a take. 
Uh, let's take a quick break. Wasn't Chad this time? <laughs> All right, we're <laughs> we're back on Sports Dump. Quick break for Eric Trent to take a call from our photographer Jared Wenzelberger. Where was he at? Headed he, for Mossy Rock. He's headed for Mossy Rock Volleyball District Opener. All right, and just uh, finalizing his assignments for the night. You love to see it out at Nightcrawler. Just <laughs> just the best. Uh, let's move into the playoff picture. And we've got a whole list of crossover playoffs and matchups for this week. Uh, are these games all going to be Friday, Saturday, different days? Are they set? The the days are all set, yes. Yeah. But uh, though I think it's pretty much split between Friday and Saturday. Yep. Okay. So the first one, we've got Adna, the South Seed, uh, number five, playing at Napa Mode. It's Jeez. a tough draw. Tough that's, draw, that tough draw for the Pirates. <laughs> that game will be on Saturday at 1? Yeah, 1 six, o'clock. One, 1? 1, I think. 1. I think the Rochester game. Yeah, yeah. Ignore okay. <laughs> Add to, at Napa. We figured all this out like today, so. <laughs> uh, who do we got in that one? I think, what did Napa Vine win their first matchup? 44 nothing. I want to say. Uh, all right. Uh, is Napa Vine significantly worse since then? No. In is fact, Adna be better. significantly better since then? No, I think no, they're worse. They're probably worse. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I would lean Napa Vine in that one, I suppose. Uh, let's see our other crossover matchup. The other 5 1 matchup is Raymond South Bend, the North number five, playing at Kalama, the South number one. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Upset alert? I like Kalama in this one. <laughs> oh, dang it. Dang it. Uh, yeah, I don't know that Raymond South Bend <laughs> is uh, going to shut down old Jackson Esri. Uh, yeah, they, <laughs> probably not. I don't know if they'll shut nobody, down anything. Nobody else really seems to have been able to do that this year. And sorry, uh, are they the Ravens now? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yep. Sorry, Ravens. Um, I don't like your odds in this one. <laughs> uh, Morton White Pass, the North number four at On Alaska, the South number two. I'm going on. Ani. Ani. You like Ani Honestly, this one? a lot of the two B matchups are a little underwhelming this year. I think. Yeah. Uh, they yeah, haven't they played already this year, have they? They have mm- not. No, they have not. But okay. I expect On Alaska to win by a couple scores. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably fair. Uh, Toledo, the South number three at Northwest 2B League champion Friday Harbor. Oh. Boy, is it time for a round of, uh, but who have they played? Yes. They beat, they beat Coopville twice. But they're, the league, know. they're the league champion, though. They, they play the same teams like multiple times yeah. every year. So uh, Let's see. Where is Friday Harbor on the RPI board? They are Not high. 28th. Yeah, look at that. With an underwhelming 5-4 and four record, but they're 4-0 in league. Yeah, against they two have, teams. They, <laughs> they beat LaConnor 63 0. They beat Seton Catholic, a uh, powerhouse team that pops up if you need a game randomly, Seton Catholic. They beat Coopville 32 6. They beat LaConnor again 56 0. And then they beat Coopville again 13 uh, 6. Their losses have been to South Woodby, Granite Falls, South Woodby again, and Bellingham. So. I got Toledo the, by a lot. And WIA was going to give them an automatic state berth, and Central 2B had to convince them to play to do this play-in game. Yeah, that's... <laughs> it's time for... <laughs> Toledo needs to go out and just make a statement with this one. Yeah. I think that's what they're looking for. It'll look great in the eyes of the seating committee, I'm sure. Yep. Uh, Toledo rolling into this one with an 8-2 and two record. Their losses are to Onalaska, 32-6, and Kalama, 36-7. So they haven't lost to anybody that, you know, they weren't supposed to lose to. Um, they've got some, uh, yeah, they've got a lot of pretty good wins in there, I guess. Yep. So, yeah, I like to lead on that one, too. Uh, in the two A's, we've got Columbia River at Tumwater. Thoughts? Ah, oh, poor Columbia River. <laughs> <laughs> they got to drive all the way up to Tumwater to... That won't be pretty. A lot of blowouts this week. Uh, Tumwater, though, only number 12 on the RPI board. Oh, no. Mm, so. Mm. Could no. be a big upset, They might be I close, guess. then. Where is Columbia River on right, the RPI we do board? Take Probably 10 or something. High, we do take <laughs> high value in uh, RPI, don't yeah. we? Where is Columbia River? I'm scrolling. And, oh, they're 42. Okay. Oh, 42, that's, pretty, okay. that's pretty low. They're 3-7 and seven this year. Ooh. Yeah, I think uh, Tumwater's probably safe there. <laughs> 
Let's see. We've also got Mark Morris at WF West. Can the Bearcats do it? Can they get back to state? Yes. This might be the first good matchup, though. Maybe not <laughs> amazing, but I could see both these teams, you know, competing pretty well with each other. Did uh, they beat Ari Long, Mark Morris? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Can't yes, remember. They did, yeah, I Mark think. Morris beat Ari Long 48-7. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Mark Morris rolling with a 5-4 and four record. Wins over Castle Rock, Aberdeen. Ridgefield, Hawkinson, and R.A. Long. They've they lost. Didn't. They've lost to Woodland. They've lost to Hudson's Bay. They've lost to Washougal. Wait, no. This might be reversed. I think they yeah. lost yeah. to Hawkinson. I think you're right. Aberdeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they didn't beat Ridge, Ridgefield. They lost to Castle Rock, Aberdeen. God, they lost to Castle Rock and Aberdeen. I'm well, having so, a hard time taking them seriously. Yeah. So I've heard. They'd be a force I've Aberdeen. heard they were out their entire offensive line and like their top three ball carriers in those first two games. So mm-hmm. probably shouldn't take too much stock in that. Mm, a little smoke and, Colombian, little smoke and mirrors from Mark Morris. Wow. TDN. <laughs> oh, the TDN. You're friends at the TDN. Yeah, I got WF West. But I, I have WF West. I think it might be close for a little bit, though. Yep. It, th- this is the first matchup where I'm like, oh, this might actually be a good game. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, playoffs, you know, when when stakes change and stuff like that, you know, like you got to throw the records out when you, you got to throw the, the records. Oh, you know, there's the cliche. <laughs> oh God, I hope I don't hear that. Uh, let's see. And then Rochester at Hawkinson. Hawkinson's the GSHL number two. Whew. First uh, time in what, Hawkinson, 10 years? <laughs> Hawkinson, seven and two, seven and one league. They've had a weird year. They lost their two first, their, their two first, first two games of the season. I don't know why that was so hard. <laughs> Are the they teams lost, good? They lost to Linden. Oh, okay. 24-21. Trent, your favorite school. <laughs> and they lost to Ridgefield 35 nothing. Okay, two top three teams in the state. <laughs> Since then, actually, I don't think they're... They haven't won... How many games are on here? Because they've got Columbia River listed on here twice. And I know they didn't play Columbia River twice on October 8th. But so. they probably only have those two losses. Yeah, they do only have those two losses. Since then, they beat uh, R.A. Long by a lot, Woodland by a lot, Columbia River 31-6, Mark Morris 45-14, Hudson's Bay 52-20, and Washougal 40 nothing. There it is, that beautiful 40 nothing score, yep. the mm-hmm. hat tip. So, yeah, Hawkinson, they're they're on a heater. Yep. The, yep. Easily and his boys, they got the work cut out for them. Yeah. But again, you got to throw the records out of the book. Anything know. can happen. Rochester is coming in hot. They got that underdog mentality. They yeah. just nobody believes in us. The chip on the shoulder. Chip on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> um, they can't yeah. hold anything back. Yeah. They're gonna <laughs> exactly. unleash the playbook. On They're them. a young team. They just they don't know any better than to <laughs> to play with their, their their whole hearts. Leave it all on the field. You know, heart on their sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I hope Rochester uh, gives Hawkinson a game. That'll be cool. Yep. Take a, shot, that. take a shot every time we say a sports cliche during this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the game. Let's see. And then in the 1A's, Tenino hosts Castle Rock. <gasps> yep. Castle Rock beat Mark Morris. They did beat Mark <laughs> Morris. Um, let's see. Castle Rock is 4-4. Four and four. According to the WAA, they have a 0-0 zero and zero record in league play, which seems unlikely. <laughs> uh, they spreads. did beat Mark Morris. They lost to Ridgefield, lost to Montesano 38 22, which Ooh. is a common opponent. Ooh. Uh, they beat Fort Vancouver 55 0. They beat White Salmon 42 6. They, they beat Eaton, Seton Catholic 42 40. They lost to Eatonville 42 0. And they lost to the center 31 14. I like that. Those odds here, boys. Yeah, I big like, time. I like the Beavers. I like the Beavers. They have like time. five common opponents. They do. They do yes. have a lot of them. But, but I mean, honestly, Castle Rock kind of hung in with, with Montesano, it looks like. So, um, you, you know, you never know. What was the Montesano score? Uh, let's see. 38 22. Oh. Columbia River. But they oh. got blown out by Edenville. So, yeah. I don't know. Thirty. It was 38 20 in the season opener. Okay. Yeah, ten, I got to know by a couple. All right. And, yeah, once these games are over, uh, traditionally the seating committees meet on Sunday up at WIAA headquarters in Renton, and they will branch out into their separate rooms and uh, take, a, take a straw poll or something like that. They'll go through and rank teams, set them up like that, get a bracket established, and then tweak it a little bit and – you know, make it look just right. The big thing in the 2B bracket, particularly. Oh, we didn't. What are the 1A playoffs? Do we oh, have, or yeah. the 1B playoffs? I was just Do looking at those? that. Evergreen Lutheran at Winlock. 
and Evergreen Lutheran is good, and that is Friday. Yeah, that's a battle between two one-loss teams for a state berth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how Seven that, that happened, but yeah, the Evergreen Lutheran only has one loss. It's to Quilcene, who's getting votes in the, was getting AP, vote, uh, AP votes in the last week, um, and Winlock only has a loss to Nacelle. Yeah. So well, that's going to be, be interesting. Tough. All right, yeah, Mossy, best of luck. Mossy Rock has Nia Bay, who is... Who just like a, beat Lummy. Seems like a powerhouse. <laughs> yeah, Nia Bay's so. pretty good. All right, so yeah, the seating committee will meet on Sunday and set the brackets. Those are usually out uh, early in the afternoon, I think. If, you should be able to find those probably on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook by 3 o'clock, probably. And everyone mm-hmm. will be happy with all the decisions that are made. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually. Um, they brackets traditionally look better with the seating committee than they have with just the straight preordained bracket. Um, you know, with the preordained bracket, you don't control your own destiny. Right. But uh, with the seating committee, the seating committee controls your destiny. <laughs> um, I don't know so, what's scarier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for the two Bs, the big thing is going to be settling who gets the four buys. Um, I think we can probably agree Kalama and Napavine are getting two of them. Yep. I don't know who will get the other two. I suspect they will try to be fair and give two of them to Okanagan and Lind Ritzville if yep. they win this um, weekend. Let's see. Lind Ritzville, Okanagan, and Columbia Burbank are all still undefeated, so they seem like likely options. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be one of the two of them. One of them is going to be mad about not getting it, but... Yep. Um, yeah, and it doesn't hurt that the kind of perceived number three out of District 4 is on Alaska, which rolls in with a 3-5 and five record. Yeah. Uh, so, like, yeah. it's tough to like to argue for them getting a first round bye when they won three games. I can't wait till Onalaska faces one of those undefeated teams. Yeah, it's gonna Washington. be fun it's when be Onalaska funny. drives over the mountains and hangs sixty on Lindridsville <laughs> <laughs> or Lakeside Nine Mile Falls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Lindridsville, Okanagan, and Burbank. Lindridsville. Let's see. Um. Uh, they've they played a lot of close games actually. Eighteen seven over Liberty, twenty five twenty four over Davenport. Uh, look, man, if you want to impress me, you got to beat Davenport by more than one point. <laughs> Davenport, the Gorillas, uh, and they beat Colfax fifteen fourteen. So they're good in a in a scrum. You get them in a low scoring tight game, and you know Lynn Ritzville's money well coached. <laughs> just a just a well coached team. Got a lot of respect for that program. Some more cliches for you. Uh, <laughs> Can't. What, uh, They're just a really physical, hard nose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> physical is just going to come at you. Oh, Toledo uh, gets one of those teams, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you get Okanagan, 9-0. and uh, Let's see. They played any close games? I don't uh, think so. Oh, think well, their game against Oroville was only 2 nothing, so that's pretty close. That might have been um, a forfeit. <laughs> that was definitely a forfeit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, they've kind of blown out everybody. So you got to wonder, a team like that, you got to wonder if they've really been tested, if they uh, if they know how to play against what's going to happen when you come out and punch them in the face. Yep. And then the other potential one seed maybe would be Columbia Burbank, which they is nine and zero. Blown through Ewak, and uh, they've uh, let's see, they beat Mapton twenty two twenty one. Powerhouse Mapton, that's a tight game. Mapton, <laughs> perennial powerhouse <laughs> um, Mapton. They yeah, only know. beat Keona Benton twenty one fourteen. What did they be? did they play? Kitas and Clalem. Uh, they played Clalem Roslyn. Yeah, beat them two nothing. Okay. So another forfeit there. <laughs> um, what is this tight game with Mapton? Oh God, Mapton's three and four. They can only beat three and four Mapton by a point. I don't know, man. Ooh. Ooh. I- I'm sure there's a bunch of teams on the west side, you know, that like teams like on Alaska and Toledo who would rather play, not have the buy. They can get warmed up, and then uh, all they have to do is go across the state. And, it know. feels like that would be a useful game for like an on Alaska to like a. <clears throat> figure out like how to they, win. Yeah, they had a yeah. get-right game this week, but just to kind of get the, the repetitions of, like, winning a close game out. Right, right, and, would, and, and Toledo, too. Would um, you guys be surprised if it was Napavine, Kalama, Toledo, Onalaska in the semifinals? No, it's been the nope. final four has been all either. District 4, like, the two, they've had the seating committee for two years, and both years, I think it was all four District 4 teams. Got the buys? Well, they didn't have buys. No, they didn't have buys, but they were all in the final four. Oh, right, because it was 16 back then. 
right? Yeah, there might have been one the first year that wasn't. Hmm. But I don't think so. I think the first year it wound up being like, oh, Navamine Kalama, Adno Akayakum or something. And then the second, like, yeah, then 2019, the Onalaska year was Navamine Kalama won and Onalaska. Adna? Was it Onalaska Adna? I think it was. I don't know. I can't remember. So long ago. It was probably Adna, Onalaska. I think Adna. it was. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like, it's happened before. It's not, it wouldn't be a big surprise at all. Hmm. Um, so yeah, we've gone through the RPI rankings. We've gone through the crossover setups. Um, do you guys want to talk about furniture? Yeah. Always. What, uh, what's your favorite piece of furniture in your house? Both of you. You can, you gotta go, man. It's, I got grilled a, last week. I always so. say it, it's my <laughs> recliner couch. Well, throw that thing in the garbage. It's, it is wheel old. It out, wheel it out into the alley behind Alex's apartment so he can sleep on it. <laughs> go down that to is my apartment. Go, go down to Elam's Home Furnishings and Mattress Gallery. Get yourself a better recliner couch. Uh, recliner couch? What, are you 80? They're good for taking naps, falling asleep to documentaries. Go down there How and get yourself you? a... <laughs> go down there and get yourself a, like a fainting couch or a uh, like a... A, a day bed, you know, <laughs> one of those things. Maybe a new uh, a new Davenport <laughs> in a <the> hospice or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just go see go see our friends at Elam's Home Furnishings and Mattress Gallery. They'll they'll hook you up. They got great prices. Everything you need to furnish every room of your home, not just the living room, not just the bedroom, not just uh, in Alex's case the the alley. <laughs> um, they got great stuff. It's well priced. Uh, they'll hook you up. You know, they'll even just sit on any of the chairs you want. It's great. 1530 South Gold Street in Centralia. You, can you give might them a have call. to take a shower first, though. Well, they want you to be clean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Roll, I tried. <laughs> you can't roll in after a 12-hour day of shooting, you know, cross-country and football in the rain and be like, oh, I'm going <laughs> to sleep on this recliner. Is that cool? <laughs> they will ask you to leave. Yeah. Uh, give them a call, 360-807-1211, or email them, info at... Elamshf.com, E L A M S H F.com, and uh, learn more about all the great deals I got over there. Uh, we got to go over grid picks real quick. They are not exciting. Last week, Everyone everybody, everybody, was everybody perfect? Oh, Chad, no. Uh, no, Chad picked. Uh, who? No, Chad had all the. No, he picked Centralia over Tom Oh, he picked Centralia over Tom Water. That, that, did that happen? No. It did not. Everybody else had all the games correct, <laughs> which from reading the week nine roundup, you can see why they were all blowouts. Yep. Uh, this week's games, let's go through them real quick. I think we've been over them, but we got to pick them live. We got to pick think them we've live. Done picks yet? Columbia River at Tumwater. Who you guys got? Tumwater. Tumwater. Yeah, I also have Tumwater. Mark Morris at WF West. WF West. I, th- I think it'll be closer than a lot of people think, but I think WF West will win. The home field advantage is going to be huge. Uh, Rochester versus Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I know I like the Warriors this year. I think they have a dynamic team. It's, but playing a, I mean, Hawkinson has been in the state championship game in the past and stuff. I mean, that's just a program. So I yeah, got Hawkinson. Castle Rock at Tenino. Uh, Beavers all the way. Beaver train. Yep. Beaver yeah. train. Yep. Mm-hmm. We're on it now. Morton White Pass at on Alaska. Yeah, I like the loggers. Yep, yep I like the loggers. Them. Toledo versus Friday Harbor in a statement game. I got Toledo by a lot. Toledo by a lot. By a okay. lot. Adna at Napavine. Ooh. Yeah, poor Adna. Tough, tough breaks. <sighs> yep, I, yeah. got, I got the Tigers. Uh, I feel like they will be ready as they have played in the state playoffs uh, pretty much every year for, I don't know, 15 years now. Something like that. I mean, and, yep. and this is with Napavine, too, it's crazy. They might be the deepest team in our coverage area. Maybe outside Tumwater. I mean, they're legitimately, they have playmakers at every single position. Mm-hmm. They have like three running backs who'd probably be playing at any other school. They, they got Their backup quarterback apparently is very good. You know, Ashton Demers killing it, but their backup quarterback is like a freshman and apparently a stud. So Who's their backup? Is it just another Demers? No, it, I think his name's <laughs> Shields. Last huh. name's Shields, but apparently he's good. We don't know. All right. <laughs> but... Uh, let's see. Evergreen Lutheran at Winlock. God, this is where we differ, tough. I think. That's a tough draw for Winlock. I have Evergreen Lutheran. I think they, mm. they, I'm, they, 
They look good. I mean, they hung with Cool Scene, who's undefeated, and um, yeah, I think I got, I think I got Evergreen Lutheran. I'm going Winlock because home field advantage. I think it's gonna be very close, and I think the home field advantage. Uh, well, far be it for me to pick against Winlock. So, cards, baby. Cards. Master Rock at Nia Bay. Uh, I, I think Nia, Nia Bay. Bay. Yeah. Nia Bay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think Mossy's a couple. I think yeah. Mossy's a couple years away from. You know, I, I couple, think they couple, will. A couple st- years away. No, <laughs> there's another cliche. Next year they'll be good. They got both the Colbs <laughs> back. I, I, I do think going back. I do think Mossy could be a state title contender in a couple years. Yeah. But this year they're just they're still getting used to it. Yep. I mean, I think honestly, if they played eight man now, they probably would beat Wakayakum. If I'm being honest. They might. So interesting. Um, uh, one last thing: at the end of the regular season, coaches always have their uh, all league teams. Do we have any of those out yet? Any we do. Big announcements. We do. Um, we have girls soccer and volleyball. Let's uh, see. Oh, we got two B all league volleyball. Here it is. Um, and soccer. MVP Paige Chinchin Kalama. Mm. Yep, she's pretty good. First teamers: Jordan Gravenhorst, Tootle, Reagan O'Neill, Kalama. Madison Fay, Adna, Kendall Collins, Kalama, Morgan Hamilton, and Dakota Hamilton on Alaska, and Riga Niemeyer from Wakayakum. Locals on the second team, Kira O'Neill, Napavine, Kendall Humphrey, Adna. Honorable mentions, Bryn Williams, Toledo, Emily Kang, Napavine, Grace Gall, Napavine, Alyssa Davis, Adna, and Steffi Arceo Hanson, Toledo, Coach of the Year, Jenny Hamilton from on Alaska. Yeah, that's super cool what? for Jenny, too. It's just her second year and. I think it's been a minute since Onalaska's had a really good volleyball team. So yeah. they're, uh, she's turned around pretty quick in just her second year. Yeah, four wins to 12 wins. Um, they've historically been pretty good, too, though. Okay. They, they? Were, they were regulars at the state tournament here, I don't know, like five, ten years ago. I guess not like last year, but. Right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> Usually they're pretty good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 2B, C2BL, All League Girls Soccer. North Division MVP, Presley Smith from Adna. Uh, that's overall offensive MVP, Mackenzie Talia Farrow from Napa Vine defensive MVP, Maddie Stark, Adna first team goalkeeper, Macy Kalnoski, Adna. You're going to be seeing a lot of Adna, a lot of Adna, Adna in the North. Adna did Adna run the table? What did they do? Adna did win every game in league. Okay. But seven, four overall COVID deal. Uh, let's see. First team forwards, Natalia Marcial, Napa Vine, Summer White, Adna, Kaylin Todd, Adna, Mickey Ness, Ocosta, First team midfield, Haley Gallagher, Napavine, Faith Wellander, Adna, <laughs> Danny Tupula, Napavine, Kylie Denny, Ocosta, uh, Carla Von Moose, Adna, first team defense, Emma Stewart, Napavine, first team defense, uh, Taylor Evander, Napavine, second team keeper, and then there's a whole bunch more. Uh, Callie Lawrence from Alaska, South Division MVP, Marina Smith, Toledo, Offensive MVP in the South, and Kalama's Brooke Milahov was the defensive MVP. First team keeper, Alex Cleveland Barrera from Mount Alaska. Uh, Brooklyn Sandridge was a first team forward from Mount Alaska. Rose Dillon Toledo, first team midfield. JC Talley, Mount Alaska, first team defense. Um, and yeah, you can, you know what? You can find them on the internet. <laughs> Cronline.com. There's, Cron. There's a lot of them. Uh, football, all league stuff. Those haven't come in yet, have they? No. No. Any bold picks you guys want to make for all Evco, league? Evco, Evco, any MVP picks? Oh, we can oh, just run to... through them. Two A, Evco, Who's Peyton MVP? Hoyt, Tumwater, uh, Hoyt. They'll do. Uh, they do offensive and defensive MVP. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll say Hoyt is offensive MVP and Pe- defensive MVP. Who the Otten kid? I don't know if they'll give them both to Tumwater. Yeah, they will. You think so? They will. Is yeah, that I mean, normal? Yeah, they won every game by a lot. Well, they've they've split it up though. Like I mean, Kalama. Soccer won every game but one, um, and they didn't win MVP, Offensive Player of the Year. So, uh, Gavin Fugate will be your first team quarterback, though. Yes, for sure, he will. I think Talon Betts will be a first team running back. Yep. Even um, though he should be an offensive MVP. If you took Hoyt away from Tomwater, how much would they drop off? If you took Betts away from Rochester, well, if you just swapped they might them. not even have a win. Yeah. <laughs> But well, and if you swap them know. on teams, like, yeah, it's, it's good. I don't know if they <laughs> wouldn't have a win. That's rude, but <laughs> no. I mean, if you took bets off of Rochester, they oh, might, uh, they might be winless. But if you took Hoyt maybe. off of Tumwater, they'd still be league champs. Yeah, I don't know. That's not how they tally them up, though. It's all MVP <laughs> almost always goes to the best player on the best team. Yeah. 
Uh, two Bs, let's see, north or south MVP picks. I'll say Gavin Parker will be offensive MVP okay. in the north. Jackson Esri will be an offensive MVP in the south. Yep. And then defense in the south. Gosh, I don't know. Maybe a kid from Ani. Gunner Tally. I could see Gunner Tally being defensive MVP. Interesting. Could be. Uh, uh, he, I mean, he had three picks in a single game and, um, you know, gets like 10 tackles a game or something. So yeah. I could see that. And they were the second seed. I mean, even though they finished, you know, three and five, I could see that happening. Yeah. Um, in the north, I don't know. I don't know about defense. It might it'll, be another Napa Vine kid. It'll, it'll I mean, be another Napa Vine kid. I just don't know, like. Parker's probably their best defensive player, They probably player won't too. want to give both to Parker. Yeah. No, they won't do both. They Maybe It'll Lucas. Be... They could do Lucas Dahl. He's been pretty good for them. The The safety is pretty good, too, for Napa Vine. Uh, Land, Landry. Ashton oh, Landry. Ashton, Ashton Landry is pretty good safety. Yeah, he is pretty good. I mean, yeah, they got – I mean, it'll good. be – Napa Vine's going to get both of them. Yeah. They kind of have to. Yeah. Um, in the south, I mean, Kalama's definitely getting – Jackson Esri is Esri. offensive MVP. Yeah. Um, Keith defensive Olsen make though, first team line. Uh, I I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> boy. Um, and then in the one A's, uh, I think Takari Hickel. More, either I don't offensive know. or defensive. I don't know which side to be honest. He's getting like one or two sacks a game too. And they are contending but, with Eatonville, who's undefeated. Oh, Eatonville will get one. Yeah. I think tonight I will get the other. Um, yeah, and I can't remember how if they do an overall MVP. It, it seems like historically that league has handed out the longest list of all league players <laughs> for, a, for a league that it had like four teams on it at one point. They sent it an all league list of like 80 kids. And nice. it's like, what do you, what? Uh, anyway. I think Takari's got a good chance. I think Dylan Spicer has a good chance to make that list. He'd be first team running um, back. Yeah. Um, they have a couple of defenders that have a good chance. I so. could see him going like Hickel overall MVP and then an offensive and defensive MVP, both from Eatonville too. Yeah. Yep. And that I mean, there's Montesano fair. in there too. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, like there's, yeah, there's a plenty of competition there. Yep. All right. Uh, that's going to wrap it up. Where are you guys can't headed? Can we do 1Bs? Oh, yeah. Who, 1B are MVP. Who you got? <laughs> Nolan, Nolan Swafford. Probably, <laughs> probably will be a kid from Nacelle. It but should be Swafford. Swafford will, will make it in for sure. I could see Neil Patchen getting in. He puts yeah. up numbers. They'll be on Ke- there. Keegan Cobb will get in. He might be the best receiver in the yep. in the league. So, um, yeah, don't none, none of this eight-man erasure here. From Aaron. <laughs> oh no, sorry. <laughs> um, where are you guys? What are you guys covering uh, later this week? And uh, yeah, what's on the schedule for you guys? Yeah, where are you going tonight? I have today off. Man. Oh yeah, that's right. I I'm going to do w- my day off. Unlike wow. you, wow. I'm going to WF West. <laughs> you're, gonna <go> see, <laughs> you're gonna go see Dune. I've already this, seen Dune. I watched wild. that on on one of my days off when we didn't have the podcast. <laughs> did you go to the theater? Or did you watch it on the the television? <laughs> I I watched it in the theater. Yeah. Nice. I thought about watching it on my phone though, because the director was like, "You need to watch it on the biggest screen possible." It would have been fun to spite him, <laughs> but no, nah, I, I had to watch it. I went up, I went up to Olympia and watched it at the on the Dolby, whatever. Fancy. Oh, yeah. um, I saw last night in Soho up there last night. Was it good? I've seen Soho too. I liked it. I thought it was really good. The it second was half was a little weird. It uh, when it turns into a horror movie, it was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it was pretty good. I yeah. got to see that. Yeah. yeah. Good Halloween type fall type movie for sure. Great, great music too. I like the '60s London setting for like a third of it. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, mm. third of it. Yeah. yeah, you gotta watch it. It's hard to explain. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, with that, um, I think we're gonna close it out. We will. Are we coming in Sunday to do a uh, seating committee breakdown? Yep. I thought this turned into a movie podcast. Uh, well, we'll talk movies on Sunday, too. Yeah. We can talk Succession, yeah. even though you guys haven't watched Succession. You should watch Succession. I got a no. big time. Yeah, no, we're, we're coming in Sunday. Okay. Break down everything. All right, yeah, we will be back on Sunday to tell you what to expect in the first round of the state football playoffs. Until then, uh, thanks for listening.